So I've chosen to do question 1G because it includes an exponential graph and we haven't really looked at too many of those. For the remaining question 1I, um, you're welcome to try doing it on your own. I've given you other questions uh, in question 1 to do for the homework, uh, but so maybe do 1I as an extra because it's one of the last questions, so maybe one of the tougher questions. And uh, yeah, you're welcome to um, you know, message me as well if, you, if you're not understanding any of the stuff. Um, there's a lot of different notations and a lot of different new words that we're learning. So in grade nine, we only needed to know x-intercept, y-intercept, and slope when we were dealing with the straight line graph. Um, now for parabola, we've got roots, turning points. For hyperbola, we've got asymptotes, x, uh, horizontal asymptote, vertical asymptote. And for exponential graphs, we've also got an asymptote. And also for each of these graphs, there's also x and y intercepts. So it's really a huge uh, jump, like a quantum leap, really. Um, I think they expect you to just suddenly become an adult between grade 9 and uh, grade 10. So, yeah, I'm going through these things quite slowly, hence this long recap. Um, and, you know, I'd also like you to continue with, with the good work. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we can, we can uh, put this section, we, it can be a, a strong section for you. Okay, so one... Uh, G says Y equals 2 times 2 to the power of X plus 1. And the other graph is Y equals to minus 3 X squared plus 3. I'm going to plot this graph first and this one second. The reason is I'm more uh, I'm more comfortable with uh, with plotting parabolas than uh, exponentials, so I'm going to rub this one out for now, and I'm going to pick some nice x values that will hopefully make my life easier, make my sketch uh, so there's no little fractions and thirds in between my intervals. So x values, y values. Let's make x negative 2. Or even, yeah, let's make it negative. Let's actually make it negative. Yeah, negative 2 is actually nice. Um, <clears throat> negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Um, our y values... I wonder if I should write this equation for the graph. No, you know that y means this function. So I'm just going to substitute the value uh, for x into each of these equations. I'll just do the first one with you, and the rest I'll blitz through. So we're substituting x equals minus 2 plus 1. So this comes 2 to the power of minus 2 is a quarter. So we have 2 times a quarter plus 1 which is a half plus one, which is three over two. Now, just to refresh, if you're wondering how I got that two to the power of minus two is a quarter, our rule for exponents says that we flip this and then we change the sign of the power. So it's one over two squared, which is a quarter. Okay, so three over two is one and a half. Next point, two to the minus, minus one. So this comes out to one plus one equals two. Zero. So two to the power of zero is one. So it's two times one, which is two plus one is three. For 1, we have 2 to the power of 1, so it's 2 times 2, which is 4, plus 1 equals 5. And I think that's enough. Um, no, wait, we've still got to do the parabola, so let me include 2. So 2 to the power of 2 is 4 times 2 is 
8 plus 1 is 9. Okay. So let me just recall the equation for the parabola. We've got y equals minus 3x squared plus 3. Um, yeah, I think this will be fine. Okay, so very important, we're going to choose our intervals for the x and y axes. So take your time on this section. You don't want to make axes that you're uncomfortable with and then have to redo things and, uh, you know, try and, uh, try and extend things and shorten things. Um, so I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this, like we did in the last question. So minus 2, minus 1. Um, oh, all of these values are positive. Um, so I've actually misdrawn it a little bit. I've misdrawn it a little bit. So I just want to draw the x-axis a little bit lower. So I'll let my values go up 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Y values are minus 2, minus 1, 1, 2. So let's get plotting. Um, so 2 to the minus 2 is 1 and a half, so 1 is in between, and then a half is in between that, so at points it's around there. <clears throat> then we've got minus 1 and 2, 0 and 3, 0 and 3, 1 and 5, 2 and 9. Okay, so this plus 1 over here, if um, you recall from the previous lesson on exponentials, uh, when we have a plus 1 on this side, it means we take all the y values from the standard exponential and we move the whole graph up. So our standard exponential graph was y equals 2 to the x, and it had a horizontal asymptote for the x as the x-axis which is y equals 0, the value y equals 0 is the x-axis. So when the whole graph moves up because of this plus 1, the horizontal asymptote will also jump up by 1. So our horizontal asymptote will be the dotted line going through the 1. So I just know that my tail must never my tail for this exponential must never go below 1. Okay, let's plot the other graph. Ah, why am I writing out the x values? Let me rewrite it. x minus 2 minus 1, 1, 2. And let me rewrite the equation. Yeah, I'm going to be very efficient with a small board. y equals minus 3x squared. Uh, plus 3, yes, plus 3. So when we need, when we join the parabola, we need a couple of things. We need a turning point and roots. So for our standard parabola, y equals x squared, if you recall, the turning point was at 0, 0. So if we do um, something, when we add a, a constant, Say we did y equals x squared plus 1. This whole graph like moves up. All the y values increase by 1. And our new turning point is at 0, 1 this time. For the negative parabolas, it's a similar kind of story. So our standard graph for a negative parabola is just y equals minus x squared. And that graph is just the reverse of y equals x squared. 
And if we did something, say we made y equals minus x squared plus 1, and we increase everything by 1, then our turning point also increases by 1. So for this particular case, we've increased the standard form by 3. So our turning point sits at 0, 3. Let's figure out what the roots are. So remember, roots are the same as the x-intercepts. So the x-intercept is where the graph touches the x-axis. So with a parabola, it's like touching the x-axis like this, and it looks like roots going into the ground or coming out of the ground. Okay, whenever we find an x-intercept, what must we do? To find the x-intercept, we must always set y equals to 0. Okay, so I've written that in red, and you should be quite familiar with it by now. Um, let's substitute the value 0 into this equation. So we've got 0 equals minus 3x squared plus 3. Now we need to solve by factorization. I'm going to divide both sides by minus 3. So I've got 0 equals to x squared minus 1. Factorize that, x plus 1, x minus 1. And now we solve for x. The x values are going to be plus 1, minus 1. So the value of our roots I'll write it here somewhere. Roots or x intercepts are going to be minus 1, 0 and 1, 0. Okay, so if you worked out these values minus 1 and 1, as a double check, you could just plot them, you could just or you plug them into this graph. So if we use 1, for example, we have minus 3 times 1 squared. So 1 squared is 1, so it's minus 3 times 1, which is minus 3, plus 3 is 0. So that point works. Um, okay, so we've got minus 1 and 1 as our roots. Let's just see. Um, so minus 1 is a root, so it will give us 0. 1 is the other root, it will give us 0. Um, if we put 0 into this equation, we get a value of 3, minus 2, minus 2 squared is 4, times minus 3 is minus 12. So that's a little bit, um, yeah, that's a little bit too big um, for, my, for my whiteboard. So I'm just going to change it. I'm going to try using, I'm going to try using minus one and a half and see what happens. So that would be um, minus one and a half squared is um, it's three quarters. One and a half, sorry, one and a half is three over two squared is nine over four times by minus three. No, this point doesn't really help us. We're going to get all these weird fractions. Um, <clears throat> So I'm actually just going to plot it for these three points, um, and I'm just going to draw a graph like this. Okay, sorry about that, a lot of uh, confusion there, but yeah, it's also just to illustrate some of the issues you might have when you're drawing your own graphs. Okay, so now we've got the pictures, and now we need to describe two other things. It's the domain and range. So this picture can help us in that it's a visual aid to see all the x values the graph can take and all the y values the graph can take. Let's look at the first graph, y equals 2 times 2 to the x plus 1. So with this function, the exponential, we can put in any value of x that we like. So you can type in your calculator, you can put in 2 to the power of minus 20, 2 to the power of pi, 2 to the power of root 2. You can have any value of x that you want. And you can see that visually, x can indeed take anything. 
So our domain is x is an element of the reals. Now what about our range? Our range is all it's our range is all the y values the graph can take. So if we see visually here, this graph never goes below never goes below y equals one. So the range is going to be all the values of y greater than one. You can see that here. It's all these. Okay, moving on swiftly, we're going to look at the parabola. y equals to minus 3x squared plus 3. So let's talk about the domain. So here as well, we can put in any number we like as x. We can put in uh, minus 1, a half, quarter, pi, root 3, whatever, the, whatever we feel like. Um, and there's no restrictions on it. So the domain as well is going to be x can be any number. And what about the range? So we can see that this graph only takes these y values. There's nothing up here. So the range is going to be everything below the turning point. And the turning point was at x equals to 0, y equals to 3. So our range is going to be everything below that, including the turning point. So it will be y is less than or equal to 3. Notice for the exponential graph, y is strictly greater than 1. Okay. Remember, with an asymptote, the graph never touches one, so it never reaches it. But the turning point is part of the graph for the parabola, so it's going to be less than or equal to 3. Okay, so I just want to look a little bit at question 2, and then we'll call it a day for this lesson.